What you guys got another video here for you on five steps to install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC the official way which is what Microsoft recommend. Now there's quite a few ways of going about doing this but the first thing you want to do is make sure that Windows 10 is fully updated and that way we can assure that the upgrade or the installation of Windows 11 it will be 24H2 now onto this system will go smoothly if you have any updates that are pending or any updates that are missing, it can also not work correctly. So we want to make sure that we've got the best possible chance of upgrading this to Windows 11 24H2. You can type WinVer inside the search box here and we can click on this and this will tell us exactly what version we are running. We've got Windows uh, 10 version 22H2 and this is the actual final build that Windows 10 will receive. So I know I'm fully updated and there's no more security patches or any updates available for this system. Once we've done that, we're ready to move on to the next step. But before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Once you've chosen your product and you've created an account with CD Key Sales, you can click the buy now button and then you can use my promo code here, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you submit your order, they will then send you your key to your account. You can use that key to upgrade from Windows 10 Home or Windows 11 Home to Pro, or you can use it to activate your version of Windows just like you see on the screen right now. Very simple and easy to do. Okay, so let's move on back to the tutorial here. So we're going to open up the settings here and you can see I am now fully updated on this PC. That means we can move on to step two of the upgrading process to Windows 11. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be shouting in the comments section saying, why don't you just use uh, Rufus or why don't you do this or why don't you do that? This is how to do it officially using the Microsoft Bypass method which is what they have on their website. And there's been quite a few people that wanted to use this method. So I'm making a video showing you how to do it using that method. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go on to the next step. If we go to the run box by right clicking on the start button here and typing inside here, tpm.msc, you will see when we open this up and click okay here, this will open up another window and you'll be able to see that TPM is not found on this system. That means it's not supported and this is a problem why you're not being able to upgrade to Windows 11. And the reason why is because Microsoft still have quite strict uh, system requirements and that is TPM 2.0 is needed and certain CPUs are needed as well to upgrade to Windows 11. So step two is the next step that you're going to need to take. And this is if you want to keep all of your data and apps installed on that system. So open up command prompt by typing CMD and run this as administrator. And from here, what you need to do is type out this command right here. If you type this command out, what it's going to do is going to tell you what language pack you have as default on that system. This is important because to upgrade and keep all of your data and all of your programs, you need to use the exact same language pack as what's installed on the system. You can see English GB. So that would be the version that is going to be needed on this system. When I installed it, I installed with English US, and you'll see what happens when you use the wrong language pack. It's not going to allow you to keep apps and programs on your system if you don't use the matched language pack for the installation or upgrade process of Windows 11 24H2. I'll show you that in a second as we go through the installation process. Next, what you need to do is head over to Windows 11's website and download the ISO file from their website. So just type Windows 11 download inside the search box here and hit the download Windows 11 from Microsoft.com. From here, we're not interested with Windows 11 installation assistant, or we're not interested with created uh, Windows 11 installation media using the media creation tool, because we're going to be doing an in-place upgrade on this system, even though it's not compatible. I'll show you exactly how you need to do it on this computer. So you can see download Windows 11 disk image ISO 
for x64 devices. All Windows 11 are x64, so you'll need to download this version right here. Click the Download Now button, and this will download the ISO from Microsoft. It's going to be around about 5 gig odd uh, to download, so depending on the speed of your internet, it will determine how long it takes to download this file. So you can see here, confirm your language. This is the important part. You need to use the exact same language of what you're installing on that system. So really what you're looking for here is the, the language that is registered on your computer. So English International would have been the one that I should have downloaded because I had English Great Britain and I went for English United States. This is the mistake a lot of people make when they download it. And I want to show you it so you can see what actually happens if you download the wrong version. What will happen is it's not going to allow you to keep your programs. So we've got the ISO downloaded here right now. And what we're going to do next is we're going to need to mount this ISO to our computer. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to the download section and mount this onto our computer here. Before we do that, let's have a quick way to install Windows 11. If you go to ways to install Windows 11, Microsoft have a handy little document here which will help you upgrade properly to Windows 11 even on unsupported hardware. You can see here it says basically you need to check the system requirements. We already know our system is not compatible because it doesn't have TPM 2.0 and in that case, it's not going to allow you to just install or upgrade to Windows 11 the official way unless you use their bypass method. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's go back and take a look at ways to install Windows 11 here. And there is a, a part on here which will help you understand and install. So before you begin, there's a section right here that talks about PC Health Check app. Again, that's for people that are going officially upgrade and they have a compatible PC. This generally tells you whether your PC is compatible or not. Next, if you're going through the official route and you have a compatible PC, you would do that under the recommended settings here by going to Start Settings, Update and Security, Windows Update and check for updates. This method is for people that have a compatible PC for Windows 11 and they can officially upgrade to Windows 11 the official way by using that method. If you're looking at the other ways to install Windows 11 not recommended, this is for people that have unsupported hardware. And you can see Microsoft talk about how you can go about doing this, but they also had a word of caution here with serious problems might occur if you modify the registry and all that sort of stuff. Do this at your own risk. And this is what they're saying in this document right here. You can either create an installation media and do a clean install of Windows 11 24H2 of time of making this video, or you can use this uh, method to use the upgrade path, which is what we're going to do right here. There is a section of code which you have to add to the registry to be able to trick the uh, installation to be able to say that you have a compatible PC, i.e., Add in a registry key in saying allow upgrades with unsupported TPM or CPU. By using this method, it's going to allow us to be able to upgrade using the method I'm showing you, or you can use the installation assistant to upgrade that way as well. And it says create Windows 11 installation media. It explains it all on this page. But the main bit of code here is what we're going to be using, okay? And it's this bit of code right here. So let's go ahead and add this into uh, the registry so this is step three and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our registry editor by typing reg edit in here run this as administrator and what we're going to do is navigate to that location and make a registry edit again what we want to do here is start off with h key local machine and we want to open this up right here so let's open this one and then go down to system and then we're going to open this up and then we're going to come down right away down to uh, this area right here where it says setup and then go open. And then from here, we want to go Mo setup. And you can see Mo setup right here in the list. It's just down here. There we go. And on the right hand pane, we need to add that registry key in. And what that registry key is, is a new D word 32 bit value key. So right click, go new D word 32 bit value. And now we need to give it that name, 
which is allow and also upgrade and then with and then once we've done that you need to do unsupported and then once we've got the unsupported bit put in we need to put tpm just like so in capital letters or with a capital o and then cpu just like so once we've done that that's the exact registry key name that we need to use let me expand this so you can see it right there and that's what they're telling us to do on their website from there we can double click on this value now and we need to give this a value of one because that's what it's telling us on their website so let's go ahead and double click on it and now we give it a value of one here change that to one we can now click ok and now that's set and we're ready to go so let's close off that now we need to get a command which is for the windows setup command line and these are the options available there's quite a few of them here and you need to write out a command to start off the upgrade uh, process in command prompt and i'll show you how we can do that so what we need to do here is i'm going to take some code snippets from here and basically i'll leave them in the video description just in case you want to use them so let's go ahead and what we're going to do here is we're going to mount our iso so right click on it and mount it you should see right here mount left click on that and we can click open and now it's mounted so rather than just clicking on the setup file here what we're going to do is going to open up command prompt and and give it a command to install it so you can see we're on drive e and we're going to go cmd and run this as administrator and once we've got this open right here we need to change the directory to e so let's go ahead and do that by just typing e colon and push enter and this will then change us to that directory there we go now we need to type dir to make sure we're in the correct directory and we are because i can see the files right here and this is where we need to type out our command to start the installation process off so i'm going to give it a few uh, switches here to put in here so let's go ahead and type this out right here. And again, you can customize yours the way you like. But remember, we talked about setup.exe and then space forward slash product and then space server. We're going to be using this method uh, to bypass some stuff and then space forward slash compat. And then we need to do space and then ignore and then warning. So let's go ahead and put that in right here. And once we've got that done, we can go space forward slash migrate. And what we're going to do is migrate all the drivers from this computer, just like that by doing space forward slash migrate drivers space all. And then push enter and this will start the upgrade process. So all we need to do now is push enter and this will then start the upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that. You should see a little box popping up on the screen. This might take a bit of time to populate, but just give it time. And once it's done, I'll shut these back windows off. And you should see another box popping up here shortly saying install Windows Server. Don't worry, it's not installing Windows Server. It's actually installing uh, the proper version of Windows. So click on next and this will move on to the next phase where it's checking for updates and then it's going to check our system to get a few things ready and check in our PC to make sure it's compatible. But because we've used this bypass, it's going to allow us to go ahead and go with the upgrade. So look at this bit here. You need to read this information and accept their terms. And then we can move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and click accept here. Now, this is where we can choose what we want to keep, but you can see the keep files, settings and apps is grayed out. And the reason for this is because we used a different language version to what we have on the system. These need to be identical to be able to keep files, settings and apps. So I used a United States version instead of the Great Britain version. If I use Great Britain version, 
this would have been okay and I could have kept files, settings and apps. I wanted to show you that because that's important. If you do want to keep files, settings and apps, now we're forced to keep the other one. So let's go ahead and continue and we're going to get updates and it's going to go ahead and check for some updates and download these. And then what it's going to do is allow us to install this onto the system. As you can see, it's working perfectly fine. This is probably the correct method of upgrading to Windows 11 from Windows 10 on unsupported hardware using the official Microsoft method. Now, whether you should upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware is going to be entirely up to you, and that will be your decision alone. Remember, Microsoft can change uh, the size of the golf post at any time and stop Windows updates to that system because it is on unsupported hardware. They've clearly stated all of this on their website. You have to agree to it. And again, there can be some issues and bugs and things like that with unsupported hardware. But in my experience, I've installed Windows 11 on unsupported hardware and I've had trouble free computing and also been able to update using the update features inside Windows with no problems at all. And like I said, this can change later on down the line when Windows 10 end of life comes closer to the end of life uh, deadline, which is in October 2025. Again, we don't know what Microsoft are going to do in the future with unsupported hardware on with using Windows 11. They can make it difficult for people. We just don't know yet. It'll be a lot of assuming from people at this stage. They could stop all updates. There again, they might just not bother. We'll just have to wait and see. But once you've done all of this, you should have Windows 11 installed on your unsupported computer. As you can see here, we can now type TPM MSC and you can see we're still on the same computer that's not supported. It's fully working. You can update Windows in a normal way for the time being. And again, what I would say is if you're having any sort of issues, you may want to roll back uh, to Windows 10 if you're having major issues with that computer. Let me know in the comments section down below whether you've already upgraded to Windows 11 from Windows 10 on unsupported hardware and let me know whether you had any issues or anything like that. I think it would be useful for other people that are contemplating on upgrading to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. I'd be interested to read your comments. Anyway, but that said, if you do need to roll back, I did make a video yesterday showing you how to do that if you're having issues with your PC on Windows 11. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate it. Have a lovely week and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.